I have often said when it comes to sort of creating sort of a peace proposal uh, in and around sort of, uh, you know, well, to bring to an end to the this, you know, Ukraine-Russia war, um, I've always basically been said and have the position that ultimately any sort of peace, peace initiative seeking to have any sort of, um, you know, peace conference or anything like that should be led ultimately by the Ukrainians. It should be up to the Ukrainians when uh, they want to stop fighting, when they want to sort of have a look at peace. And it should be led by them. We should only be there really to sort of back them up. We should not be leading those peace negotiations. Um, if if Ukraine wants us to be involved, then it should be uh, because we are there, because they've asked us to be there in some sort of capacity. Um, but ultimately, it should not be up for the UK, America, or any other country to really sort of dictate the terms of peace, other than, of course, uh, Ukraine. Now, this does not stop, of course, other countries putting forward ideas for peace proposals. China has done, uh, has put forward an idea for a peace proposal, and Zelensky actually wanted to meet with Xi to discuss this. So, again, I, I am not opposed to sort of other countries or other parties putting forward to this, but I think when you put forward to this, there should be at least a realistic expectation to be asked, are the Ukrainians going to accept this? And more often, when we have talked about these peace proposals, the Ukrainians would, would turn around, and even some in the comments that we when we've done about this would have turned around and said, no, we would not accept that. So that's easily one of the, the biggest things when it when it sort of comes to this. Who is who is and sort of is not involved in sort of putting forward these ideas um and things like this. And one of the uh things that we've been following uh, sort of very recently, uh recently is a is a magazine or at least a a, a blog called Bright Green. It is the sort of the uh, equivalent, shall we say, to well, not really the equivalent to things like Conservative Home, Labour List, the, it's sort of the Green Party equivalent. Um, but it's had a couple of sort of, shall we say, interesting sort of <laughs> articles, shall we say, of late. Um, but that's not the other work we're getting talked about today. We're going to be talking about, of course, this proposal that got put forward by uh, their sort of working group. Um, We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens uh, when it gets put forward by this. So, uh, before we do go looking uh, at this, please do remember to uh, have a link, uh, have a look at the Patreon page, the Buy Me Coffee link, where you can well buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, there's the Pony Club down below as well that you can join as well too, which does help out the channel. And of course, thank you very much for everyone who does help watch out again. Click the like, click the share. Uh, if you are new, click the subscribe button. And of course, let's crack on uh, into this. Like I say, this comes from Bright Green with the title of a in a proposal for uh, the a, sorry, a peace proposal for the Russia-Ukraine war. So let's get into this, shall we? So we will provide the weapons you need this year, next year, and for as long as it takes. This was the Foreign Secretary David Cameron's promise to Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky in November. Uh, since then, Rishi Sunak has made a flying visit to Ukraine to pledge over £2.5 billion for their military spending this year. Once again, really glad that that is sort of being the message that sort of uh, Cameron is sort of pushing. This is sort of very, very much does have cross-party consensus to support Ukraine and to keep supporting uh, Ukraine uh, in this way for as long as um they need uh, sort of that aid, and as long as they wish to sort of keep on fighting, I think that is what is the the expression of this. So, and then I like how it. I, I like the next part of this. Assuming it doesn't escalate out of control, <laughs> I like that. Assuming it does not escalate out of control, the war in Ukraine could drag on for years. Um, this ultimately will not drag on for years. Ultimately, if we are what as a lot of people are saying is is a stalemate, the lines are sort of moving, but it is sort of very sort of traditional World War One movements where there are sort of things sort of passed between back and forth. But what you are seeing now is really Ukraine 
sort of bleed Russia dry. Um, that is their tactic. They are obviously heavily going to sort of focus, I think, on the Kerch Bridge. I think when you see them get their F-16s up late in the later half of this year, um, you are going to see a lot of uh, action from those. I think you're going to see Russia lose a lot of their anti-air um, stuff because the F-16s have the uh, anti -U anti radar um, missiles, which are going to sort of heavily uh, disaffect you know affect their anti air capabilities, air capabilities uh, on the front lines. Needless to say, it's going to have a, a relatively uh, big impact, but. Also, Russia can itself not fight this for years. They cannot just keep on throwing men just continually into this meat grinder. And they are throwing men into the meat grinder. Remember, to take a deep cut, they had over 17,000 casualties. And that was that was kills. That's not even um, things getting in like you know, those, those people who are permanently wounded or, or anything like that. Just that alone is a staggering death toll to take a town which tactically doesn't really do too much for Russia. So, anyway. Uh, anyway, it continues. So, this obviously makes... Uh, so, so, uh, so, assuming this doesn't escalate out of control, the war in Ukraine could drag on for years. This does not make uh, any sense for Ukraine, for Britain, or for the planet. Uh, so it is surely time to press for some serious negotiations to begin to find a settlement so that the killing and destruction can end. Um, this is always worth bringing up because there have been attempts at this. There was not too long ago an attempt in Malta led by Ukraine to have a peace conference, but Russia did not turn up. One of the big things as the people do not understand is that Russia is not interested in having a negotiated deal. They have said multiple times the only thing they are going to accept is the complete and absolute um, unconditional surrender of Ukraine. Putin has reiterated that very recently, um, and he's still ha they still have not moved on from that point. A big point of providing Ukraine weapons is to sort of force Russia to the negotiating table so that Ukraine does have a very strong a very strong position when it comes to those negotiations. So, there you go. Uh, Zelensky also recently put forward uh, his 10-point uh, peace plan at the World Economic Forum, Forums in Davos. Those are not new, by the way. Zelensky has been shopping those around for well over a year. Those are not, quote, recent 10-point uh, peace plan. That's been going around for a while. Um I like this, but it is completely unrealistic as it requires the total and humiliating capitulation by Russia. That is not going to happen. Um, no, a lot of this is what is asking those 10-point peace plans, is they are saying you should just leave Ukraine, that Russia should just leave Ukraine. Like, a big point of those peace plan points is Russia should just leave Ukraine, withdraw from Ukraine, and leave its territory. They they are not asking for a complete and utter sort of capitulation um, in, in that fashion. But bear in mind, remember at this time, it is worth repeating, that is exactly uh, what Russia's negotiating position here is. But anyway, it continues. So the members of the Green Party's Peace, Security and Defense Working Group have come up with an idea which we think could spark some discussion and lead us away from the stalemate. Again, I would be interested to know who are these members of, of that working group because I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you now there is not one single Ukrainian on that working group. But there you go. So currently the United States deploys over 100 B uh, B61s nuclear gravity bombs in Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium and Turkey. And the US now plans to reintroduce these bombs to the UK too. These weapons uh, have recently been upgraded to make them more uh, accurately deliverable, and the yield can now be uh, dialed up or down from around uh, 0.3 to a kiloton of over 50 kilotons. The bomb, which weighed laced to Hiroshima, was just 15 kilotons. Uh, Russia has recently completed the transfer of taxi nuclear weapons to Belarus. Uh, we are suggesting that the United States could be urged to withdraw its tactical nuclear weapons from European soil in exchange for Russia taking its nuclear weapons out of Belarus and withdrawing its troops from Ukraine. Um, that is a completely non-starter. You are saying, 
and advocating for the almost total denuclearization of of Europe, but Russia still would have hundreds of thousands of nuclear weapons pointed directly at NATO countries. Many of those NATO countries, you are now taking away <laughs> any form of, of nuclear deterrence that they now may have access to. That is just, I, I am I'm sorry, but that is just an absolutely complete non-starter. Um, well, well and truly, uh, it, just a, a complete non-starter. Um, So yeah, and it's just just you've just got to think you've got to think of almost the complete denuclearization of of Europe versus oh um, yeah we'll we'll take nuclear weapons out of Belarus and we'll withdraw troops from Ukraine. That would massively favour um, Russia, uh, almost certainly to a T. Now of course they're still not going to give up on 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 Ukraine. Um, even if there was sort of that, 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 that deal to sort of withdraw sort of, um, the, like the weapons agreement, they ain't going to withdraw troops from Ukraine. Putin has made that very, very clear. Uh, and especially other, uh, people have in, in Russian, in the Russian government have repeated that point as well. Um, so continues. So we think that floating this idea could be useful on several fronts. It draws attention to the presence of U.S. nuclear weapons in Europe, uh, which may, which many people may uh, be unaware of, and it is a pro proposal which would allow all sides of the conflict to to calmly uh, to calm uh, some to, sorry to claim some level of victory. Um, yeah. yeah, no, sorry, I, I, I again. That is that is a non-starter. It, it is a complete non-starter. It's, it's also very worryingly, um, I think, plays too much into this idea that once again that NATO are are, are responsible. Um, I, I I really do think it plays far too much that oh NATO's responsible for this because why are we withdrawing weapons from? from these NATO countries that don't have essentially their own nuclear weapons. But we're going to take them away from Belarus. But Russia <coughs> is still going to have hundreds of thousands of nuclear weapons pointed at NATO countries. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That is a complete utter non-starter for this. And I, again... Um, just for the doing that and sort of the withdrawal from troops from Ukraine, Putin would not do that. Um, no way, no way. Putin is is de pretty much determined to take territory uh, from from Ukraine uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, so again, I'm sorry, it, it's a non-starter uh, for that. So anyway, it continues. So it would, uh, if this plan were to be adopted, it would significantly reduce the risk of nuclear war uh, as its smaller tactical weapons, which are most likely to be used. It would also save many Ukrainian and Russian lives and end the destruction of homes, industry and agriculture, uh, land and infrastructure in Ukraine, uh, allow grain to flow freely again and allow billions of dollars, which would have been spent on further uh, fighting to be now redirected to rebuilding. Um, Is Russia going to go for that? No. Basically, no. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think the, the question should be, what is Russia's motivation to take that? Because you're saying, oh, it would, it would allow both sides to sort of claim some sort of level of victory. The whole propaganda pitch for, for Putin... To, to go into this and to start this war and to begin was first of all to bring back those uh, people who now wanted to be uh, sort of part of Russia. They've claimed over four different parts, uh, four different oblasts in, in, in Ukraine through 
well, very dodgy referendums. Um, they would still, of course, uh, sort of uh, continue to sort of claim Crimea. They are obsessed with uh, sort of taking Odessa, uh, very, very much so. Uh, they still want to sort of deprive Ukraine of all its coastline. Um, they also want to sort of, you know, denazify the um, the Ukrainian government. Uh, <laughs> there's just so much stuff you you could point to to say, yeah, Russia would just not accept that deal. Th that. I'm sorry, is just a complete non-start. <laughs> anyway. Um, so anyway, it continues. So this would be a popular idea. A popular idea. <laughs> uh, an opinion poll in 2020 showed that over 74% of Italians wanted nu nuclear weapons removed from their soil with a similar figure in the Netherlands and over 80% in Germany. Interesting that you have that figure pre, um, you know, Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine. Makes me wonder what that polling would be now and whether it would actually still be uh, such a, quote, popular idea. And once again, there is no reason why Russia is going to accept this. And if anything, it is just no a non-starter. Russia has no reason to sort of accept this. Um, it does not give them what they really want, which is, of course, Ukrainian territory. They ain't going to accept any of this at all. And it, interestingly enough, there are, once again, people criticizing them for this. Criticizing them for... Um, for this and and doing this in the way once again reinforcing this idea you know uh you know uh, russia says a, a uh, uh, so writer says that russia shouldn't be made to capitulate but this is exactly what russia is now demanding of ukraine um yeah um nice idea <laughs> nice idea um but i, I i'm sorry it's just not going to be accepted uh it, not going to be accepted at all and i think that plays very very much again i don't know who these members of that council are i highly suspect there's not a single ukrainian on that on that council you know maybe they should be involved as i said at the start of this video <laughs> you know in sort of talks like this um but it does that that peace agreement seems to play very very much into the the idea that that nato is responsible uh, for for this war that you know it's it's nato's fault uh that's generally how that peace agreement seems to be falling for me and certainly seems to be based in that ideology uh on that front but yeah russia's got no reason to um to accept that peace deal okay you get most of like american you know nuclear weapons removed from europe why is still Putin going to withdraw troops from Ukraine? So, anyway, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Let me know what you think uh, down below. Uh, and, of course, as always, uh, we'll see you all next time.